Coors. This one's for you. <laughs> Just in the middle of the podcast. All right, let's thank our our sponsor. I thank Coors our sponsor, Banker. Coors. Uh, I do not have any Coors on me, but, you know, thank you for sponsoring this. <laughs> All right. Let's get this going. Oh, you do got a Coors. You got a Coors on light. On hand. How you doing, man? Uh, good. The baby just got done being sick. Uh-oh. When we got back from LA, he got like this is his first time ever being sick, and so like at one point too, we took him to the ER. He was fine, but we took him just as a precaution, and they like sucked out his nose because it was like deep condition, and then we just had to start doing like saline and like sucking out all his shit, and then he had a cough. And then it seems like today he's back to being his normal self um, for the most part. But he got the rest of us sick. Hey, Me, Daniel, and Alyssa are sick right now. So <clears throat> kind of dealing with that. But let me pop in a halls so my throat's not drying up. Hey, listen, at least uh, at least the new Warzone map drops this week. So, so that should be good. So. My schedule changed, so I'm off work. I know I'm. I'm still. I'm stuck on the night shift, but you know that's that's that. Yeah. That's that. Um, the last time you were on the show, you uh, you were not engaged. You were. You didn't have a kid. Now, uh, now we fast forward to, to 2023. You are now engaged to be married, and you uh, do have a child on hand. Uh, going into your 2023 season at Shacktoberfest, man, uh, what was that like? Putting that kind of, you know, putting that life, your your dad life, to the side to have one last season. How hard was that for you, man? I know you uh, you you've expressed it to us many times, but like. Talk to us, man. How hard is it being a parent away from your your family? At first, I thought it was going to be, like, hella easy. I really did. Because I was like, he's a baby baby. So, you know, we're not at that stage yet where he was, like, constantly wanting, like, to be active and, like, still really sleeping a lot throughout the day and, like, stuff like that. Um, But no, and then quickly fucking realized it was really fucking hard. Like really, really hard. Yeah. And then, because it was it was crazy because I went in. This all the planning of me coming back started. I want to say like June, July. I'll come back. I'm like to whether Shacktober happens again or I'll try not. So fuck it, I'll come back. And then we had the baby. Obviously, the focus was on that. And then. But, uh, no, yeah, it was, like, I thought, like, everything was going to be fine, and then it really wasn't, because it was, like, the thing that hurt me the most was, was, like, watching my kid grow up and get older and bigger through freaking, like, pictures yeah. that Danielle would send me, and, like, I can't physically, like, hold them and all this stuff, and then, so I want to say, like, a month before season started... Like, I was, like, debating in my head. I'm like, I'm like, fuck. It's time to be an adult. <laughs> I was like, I was like, should I really fucking do this? But I already committed to it. I had the time off from my normal day job. And obviously just being out back in L.A. with all you guys, the homies, you know, with my, my family too, like my mom and them and stuff like that. So I was like, I was like, yeah, I could do it. And then I was just like, I think it was like, I want to say like two, like two weeks before we went out there. It was when I really started putting the pieces together. And I was like, holy fuck, like, I think I might have to call it this year. This might be like my last season. And then I want to say like a week to like a couple days before is when I talked to Danielle. And she, did, she didn't really want me to 
to stop. She wanted me to keep going. But things change and I'll get into that. But I was just like, like I have to go. Like, I'm a freaking dad now, dude. Like, it's already going to suck that, like, I'm not going to see you guys as often. I'm not going to see the baby often. Like, you know, but, you know, might as well give it, like, one last, like, shot or something. And so we went out there. That's when we saw you at Scary Farm for opening weekend. We did our little, like, family haunt trip and stuff like that. And then, obviously, instead of me coming back here at home, I stayed out there. Danielle and the baby and Alyssa left. And, uh, dude, I, I, fuck, I didn't think I was going to cry when they left. But, dude, I was bawling my eyes out. And then I was telling her, I was like, yo, how much are tickets to go to Scary Farm tonight? Because I'm, like, I'm hella down in the dumps. And then she just, like, five minutes later, she texts me a picture. And she's like, here's your ticket. Show up at my house at, like, six. And I was like, bruh. <laughs> so shout out to Hunter because big support, big, big support. For not just me, for like Danielle, the baby, and everything, and but she's obviously the one who like helped me get into Shaq and all that stuff. And um, but no, yeah, it's seasons. You know, first weekend I was like, "Fuck yeah!" Like this is sick. Like I'm finally back home, Queens ground. All the guys there, they were like, "Oh, well, except for the ones that were there at uh, Shacktober the first year," but. They're like, damn, bro, this the floor over here is like so weird. It kind of sucks. I'm like, nah, dude, this is this is butter to me. This is this is amazing floor to slide on. But then I also started realizing once like the first weekend was going, I wasn't going too hard. So I know like I didn't get sore or anything, but my body just physically can't like wasn't able to like withstand everything. Not to mention, dog, me like you can understand we're big boys, so. Like, you know, it's, it's fucking hard. And I, well, I mean, to think about it too, like when the baby was born, we literally like sat down, didn't get up off our bed for like two weeks because all he did was, all he did was sleep. <laughs> and so we would just lay there and watch TV next to him. So for like a solid, like two, three weeks, we literally did like no physical activity besides getting up to cook and go to the bathroom. <laughs> and my dumb ass didn't put two and two together. I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, maybe it's just because I'm not in shape, but no, I've had constant problems and stuff with, like, not really my knees, but my ankles for some reason. I think it's also just to, like, my normal day job. It's a lot of constant walking and stuff like that, so, um, and previous injuries, non related to sighting, but, no, yeah, freaking, like, being with, like, a whole new team, too, people, like, Half those guys, I didn't know them. I was like, I was like, I know who they are, but I don't know them. And I'm, I'm very proud to say that I honestly had like, I, I wouldn't have wanted to finish my last season with the any other group. Like those guys, like really fucking made it for me. Like, and then as like the like, season went on, things were crazy. Things were fun. Some days I just was like out of it, but I still pushed through. And then. I just want to say, I think the way it like started really kicking in was like the closer and closer as I got, I was like, damn, knowing that the 30th is going to be my last day was when I was like, I have to go all out like every freaking night. Right. Like no matter what bullshit I deal with, with like a guest or something, I'm like, I have to go all out. And so, yeah, we just, you know, good season, good run. Uh, last day it was cool freaking matt coming out to uh to guest scare with us that that really made my night too uh paul showing up with his uh qm jersey and his qm hat because me and him started sliding and like haunt together so and that was really cool and then just a whole bunch of other like knots friends and stuff like that that like i've known for a long time like i'll say this i'm i'm, I'm definitely not one of the big popular like haunt people i'm really not i never was Bro, you and it wasn't like you the a-lister what are you like, talking about <laughs> no but it's it's like like when people say oh matt from ghost town or bronx you know who it is like who? oh if they say like you know anybody else they're like they know who it is with me it wasn't really like that but that's fine and like 
I had people that like I barely met because I saw them this year at Knott's come out on my last day. Like, oh, we're here to come see you. Come see you on your last day. And I was like, what the fuck? And I was <laughs> like, I was like, all right, I guess. But that was just cool. Everybody there made a lot of new friends, a lot of good memories, and then yeah, I gave my little speech at the end of the night. Freaking bald all freaking night, like, before we even got off the opening cer- ceremony, like, I was already crying on my hot box, and then, like, everybody's <laughs> like, oh, it's all good, it's all good, and I'm like, this sucks. And I remember, like, at the end of the night, after I did my speech, and I was, like, hugging everybody, and I hugged Paul. And he's like, he's like, bro, stop. And he's like, I'm already crying, too, and I was like, dog, I'm like, this, this low-key kind of sucks, because I'm like, damn. I'm like, I, I gotta be in a, a like a legit adult now and think of priorities. But in the end, I will definitely say it was worth it to do it as my last season. Um, because my main thing that I learned being gone from the baby was I was like, I can't miss these first years. Like, these first, like, five years of a kid's life is, like, the most important the ones he constantly, like, which, yeah, I see him grow up from being, like, a little, little baby to, like, to where he then understands things. So, I told everybody, too, it's not a full-on goodbye. I at least said, like, I would at least be gone for a five-year, like, minimum, and then I'll see if I were to go back and, like, scare again. But... Yeah, it was definitely challenging mentally more than physically, but great run. Shout out to the homies. And um, it was a good time. And it was really, <laughs> I remember when you showed up, I was like, oh, Tony said he's going to be here today. I was like, I forgot who said it, but they're like, oh, who's Tony? I'm like, oh, it's our buddy who does his podcast. And he's like, oh, like, what does he look like? I'm like, dog, trust me, you'll see him. <laughs> he was like, what do you mean? No, you'll see him, bro. And then you come walking around, I'm like, that's what I was like, yeah. And then he was like, oh, that's Tony. I'm like, yeah, the big motherfucker. I know, dude. I was, I had a lot of fun this year at Shacktoberfest. Um, they did do a lot of like massive improvements to the event. Uh, and it, it was a little bit more scarier. Uh, the mazes were a lot more better this year. Um, even going back on the boat again, that was, that was a lot of fun. Um, brought back a lot of nostalgia from, from 2019. That was really cool. Uh, going into your first weekend, compare and contrast, like from a queen opening night to a, to a Shacktoberfest opening night, what were, what were the differences that you saw uh, approaching that, that opening night? That, uh, I had seen that first year at Shacktoberfest, they didn't do the whole big, like opening gates, like how, um, Dark Harbor did it or like in reality, like really no big like the crowd stays back kind of thing and then like we charge at them with kind of like the crowd's already there and then we just come out and then then we do like a little like thing so in my head i was like this is weird as fuck and at first i was like i really don't like this because this is kind of like it was like a little dumb because i'm like dude like half these people already went through like half the mazes you know they're just hanging out and then here come us like out of nowhere and then we're just standing there. Like, that was, like, the one, like, thing that I, like, I think a lot of us didn't like is that we would come out, we'd wait in that little spot before we did the witching hour, and we're just standing there. Like, we could scare, but we couldn't, like, leave that area. And so we were literally just standing there, and everybody's, like, looking at us, and we're, like, you know, we have to be in character and stuff. So, like, we would, like, scare people around there or whatever. And then we'd always have to constantly yell at people because there was no security and no designated people. To like be like, oh, you can't like like stay back because like they're gonna walk through this way. Um, and then comparing to like a dark harbor opening where we're not even just street talent, all the maze like monsters, and it's like pretty much the entire cast that was like at dark harbor. It was like us in the front, and literally like every single like maze monster behind us. So it was easily like I want to say like a hundred to like two hundred people just in the opening uh, like ceremony so and then that whole thing with like dark harbor when the gates when those gates open and that crowd sees us and we see them i felt like that that built like the more like intense like 
but for the for as a guest like being like oh my god like it's like we're going and for us being like all right showtime like we gotta like kill it and then just charge like straight at them going to like oh we gotta stand here for like five minutes and then fly it out and then then we can go scare but you know it was cool like um I don't know if you saw, but um, when Great Ghost would like go on the on the stage, and we'd all point at the stage, the uh, the military guys um, they would do the salute and they would yell out the ooh rah, but they would they wouldn't like really scream or it's not like they had like mics or anything. So then we started freaking yelling it like it like in sync with them, and then everybody like really like paid attention. <laughs> Because at first, nobody even freaking, like, half the people were like, oh, damn, there was monsters on the stage. And we're like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, yeah, like, if I were to rate each, like, opening, obviously, Dark Harbor is, like, a 10 out of 10. Shacktoberfest, in my opinion, was, like, our opening ceremony. I'd probably say, like, an 8 out of 10. Just due to the fact that, like, we we don't really build so much anticipation with, like, the guests not seeing us. And then, like, in a snap, like, they see us charging at him. Right. But no, yeah, it was a, a big difference, a big change, but it worked out. It was fun either way, so. Now, uh, one of the things that uh, we've we've gotten to talk about a little bit uh, between all of us was, was something that I thought was hilarious. Uh, the night you and Oingo got to uh, scare Nadia. The freaking streamer. Um, now, if anyone doesn't know who Nadia is, Nadia is this uh, famous streamer on, uh, I believe, Twitch. And she uh, was known for playing Call of Duty. Was um, She claimed to be great at Call of Duty. Then she got caught cheating. Uh, and then <laughs> now she does like some weird vlog style things. That's usually what they all do when they get caught cheating is they just try to move on and forget it ever happened. So... Talk to us about how that experience went, because I know uh, that I know that was a fun one for you guys in Wingo. No, yeah, so we were scaring. It was already, like, close towards the end of the night. It was maybe, like, 30 minutes before we had to go into, like, the block party and, like, hang out and crowd interact and take photos and stuff. And we're just hanging out. And then one of the other sliders um, goes, holy shit, I think, like, that's Nadia over there. And at first I was like, I don't know who the fuck that is, whatever. Wingo went. And then he came back, he's like, bro, you know Nadia, the chick who got caught cheating on COD? And I was like, huh? And then he, was, he like, explained it more to me, and I was like, oh, the chick with the really freaking big forehead? <laughs> he, she was like, yeah. And I was like, dude, no way. And we go over there, and I, at first I was like, no, it's not, because she had, she, like, dyed her hair. Right. So I was like, oh. and then I, when we started talking with her, we were, like, this close from her, I was like, holy crap, it is, like, Nadia. <laughs> And then she was like in life for bumper cars and she gets on and like we were like the bumper cars are kind of weird. You have to crank the wheel a certain way for the car to start moving. And we were telling her and she couldn't even like crank the wheel. And like we're standing like on the bumper car rail and we're yelling at her. And then I hear I freaking yell out. I was like, oh, her Cronus isn't hooked up, bro. She, <laughs> but she can't drive. And she looked up and she, she looked at it. She's like, are you guys serious right now? And then everybody's like, bro, her hacks are off. That's why she can't move the car. And we're just roasting her and roasting her and roasting her and roasting her. And then someone said, they're like, oh, damn, bro. I thought that was a praying mantis driving the car because she looked like a praying mantis. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then uh, we were just like, oh, fuck. Like I said, fuck it, whatever. And then I, I walked away. And then, like, from a distance, I see she goes up to, like, Oingo and, like, all the other boys. And she puts her camera down. And then, like, it looks like she's pissed. And I was like, oh, fuck. Like, I wonder what she's saying. And then, they, like, walked away. And I went up to her. I was like, what the fuck happened? And then she was like, bro, she straight up, like, paused her stream. And she was like, are you guys serious? Like, you guys had to say all that stuff? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and so, oh, that was a pretty funny-ass night. And, yeah, it was, it was pretty cool roasting her. That like her her logic to that res- that response of, and her logic to that was just so dumb because now she makes content where she just makes fun of herself doing that. It's like exactly wouldn't that add to the hype of your freaking live stream? People would freaking laugh their asses off. If I, if I was watching that live stream, I'd be like, dude, he just said you are a hacker, bro. Dude, you no, know, yeah, it was crazy because like Oingo, well, like at the end of the night, we were like hanging out in the parking lot like we always did, 
and he pulled up because people were clipping it. Yeah. So it's still, a, I believe it's still a clip from that stream where it says, like, it's, I think it's like called, like, Nadia gets called out. And it's like all of us yelling at her, all that shit. Dude, I got to try to find it for the podcast. Dude, you can see, like, the chat feed and everybody's just, like, sending, like, the emojis of, like, the lying, the laughing face. And, like, everybody's like, LMAO. <laughs> Dude. But no, yeah, it was, oh, it was, a, it was a funny ass moment, that's for sure. Uh, speaking of Oingo, you you got to finally uh, do a, a whole season scaring with him uh, for the I believe you're the first time in your haunt career uh, and maybe your last because I don't know if that kid's gonna last another five more years with the way he slides. Um, <laughs> don't even. Okay, we're gonna talk about Oingo sliding for a we're second. We're gonna talk about Oingo for a second. And Oingo, I don't even care, dog. I'm roasting you because you need to get called out. This is Omar's this podcast. Dude, he can do whatever he wants. Dude, this guy. I'm excited because I'm like, oh, I met him last year. Like, I want to say like a month before Scary Farm started. And then I met him in person for the first time when he was in Carnival. And then after, we were just like hanging out and stuff like that. And then also when he said he was going to do Shaq, I was like, oh, sick, dude. Like, we finally get to scare together and like slide and all this stuff. He's like, yeah. And he's like, I want to run with you. And I was like, yeah, dude, we'll, we'll run or, you know, we'll run together. And so we did like the first couple nights. I mean, we did it pretty much a lot of the run actually. Like we, we constantly like ran together. But I remember like the first time, like we were in that big open area, like by this werewolf, like that too. Right. And then this dude, like I'm like, I'm like, damn, there's some like nice gaps, but I was dealing with like my ankle pains and stuff like that, and I was like, fuck. So I wasn't really doing like super like full sprint like slides i was kind of doing just like fast like pop-up slides right and i was like just hit a slide dude like i know you're you're like you know you're smaller and skinnier you can probably run fat and like just hit a slide and he fucking goes this dude ran like i'm not even juggling i make fun of him so much for him this dude runs like a mile before he fucking drops down and then every time he stands up it scares the shit out of me because it looks like he's just kind of like Whip and like fucking eat shit, <laughs> but um, but no, yeah. So like every time, like I would see him like from afar, like run hell of far to do like a two foot slide and like stand up. <laughs> yeah, I was like, dude, what are you doing? And then so like we just started making fun of him. We we're like, we're like, damn, bro, I want to go running the whole last mile before he hits a slide. <laughs> you know, that's how, that's how that's his training, bro. That's how he stays in shape. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I love that fucker. It was, it was definitely uh, fun scaring with him and sliding with him. Some days he was annoying. If you know, you know why. But, uh, but, uh, yeah, it was a uh, it was it was fun scaring with him. A lot of a lot of memories made with him too. Another person who I can say I scare with and is a good friend and everything like that. So. Yeah. Uh, speaking of good friends, another one of your good friends got to scare with you on your final night. You mentioned earlier, uh, reunited and scaring with Matt again. Uh, you guys are really good friends. Um, for those who don't know behind the scenes, I mean, you guys are really good friends. You guys are really close. Um, that how is my best man? So. The, your best man to your wedding right there. Um, and so for you emotionally and everything, how was that uh, for you to, to kind of get to scare with him on your on your final night and to have him with you, Oingo, there? And then, of course, you had, like, an audience of people coming to see with you. But to have that moment again with Matt, how was that to, to, to do that again? Yeah, so it, was, it was cool because um, I had, like, met, like, I was telling because I knew he was going to come, but I thought he was going to come as a guest. And then Hunter mentioned it, like, oh, he's going to try to slide. And he had mentioned it too. He's like, I want to try to decide maybe like that one day, but we'll see because I don't know. So they'll hire me on just for that one night. And then I think it was like on Xbox or something. He was like, oh, dude, I'm not even going to like bother because it's just, they're, they're not going to want to hire me on for like one night. So parking lot. I see he's sitting there with Hunter. And then we're just like you know, hanging out. And then Hunter's like, do you not even realize it? And I was like, what? And he was like, look at my trunk. I look at your trunk. I see her big ass hot box, and then I see his big ass hot box, and then I see he's wearing like his leggings and his like shorts, and I was like, "Shit!" And like everybody was like, "Bro, you just realized?" I'm like, "Yeah, what the fuck?" And I was like, "Hell yeah, this is sick." But yeah, it was it was definitely cool. 
because like he would do his guest scares when we did Dark Harbor. I think he would do like one or two nights. It was, yeah, it was actually like two nights um, because that's when Dark Harbor would stay open like November 1st and 2nd and, and stuff. Um, but no, yeah, scaring with him and then uh, hugging out and crying before we even go out. at home, like, having one of the people that I started sliding with, like, when I first started learning sliding in general, before I even worked uh, at Dark Harbor and everything, and so all the past memories and just the, the great fun times we've always had, and then, luckily, <laughs> luckily, um, we didn't run into each other, because, uh, yeah, I think it was, I want to say, 2018, or 2019, I don't know. In Dark Harbor, we were like, so I was by the, like, in the opening gates, like, area of Dark Harbor. I was walking, like, towards the gate, and he was, like, um, popped up in a corner. And we both, like, there was a whole bunch of fog, so we didn't see each other. And I ran out for a slide, and he ran out for a slide. And, like, last minute, we both, like, just slammed on our knees, and we're like, oh, fuck, we're about to run into each other, like, in front of a whole bunch of people. And we literally just, like, collide shoulders. And we just played off. He was like, "You didn't turn on your turn signal. What the frick?" And like all this stuff. I'm like, "No, you didn't." I'm like, "I had my turn signal on. What about you?" And like, we played it off. And then I remember backstage. He's like, "Dog, what the fuck?" And I was like, "Dude, I don't know." But we rammed our shoulders like so fucking hard because we're two big dudes. So we were like, "Fuck." But uh, but then it was. It was um, I felt very happy that you, I got to stay with him, especially for my last night and everything. And then, uh, you know, it's crazy, too, because my last night, I didn't really slide, like, at all. I was kind of just in the moment, happy, like, walking around, scaring with everybody and stuff. Um, but with Matt, too, it was cool, because, like, since I wasn't really sliding that much, and he wasn't either, like, he did a couple, but the ones that he did, like, I would kind of be, like, his distraction, and then he'd, like, you know, get the scare or whatever. Um, but, uh. Yeah, I was, uh, I remember I, uh, freaking cried again after because I was like, dog, like, like, I told him to, I was like, I was like, I'm so glad you were here for this and stuff. He's like, of course, dog, like, uh, you know, and we both say, like, we love each other and stuff like that. So I was very happy and, uh, I'm glad that he was there for that last night. Yeah, man, that, that, that's, that's what's really cool that he got to come out and, and do that. I, I seen a bunch of clips and, and photos. I wanted to be there so bad, but work had me tied down. Sucks working the night shift, man. Really does. Um, but uh, you know, I I I really enjoyed the season overall. I mean, I think it was a, a, a banger season. Outside of outside of just scaring at you know uh, at haunt this year. What other? I know there's a few other ones you got to attend. Obviously, the 50th anniversary of Not Scary Farm you mentioned, uh, and you got to take um, your son to that. That I think that was I think that was really cool to kind of get him. Uh, going at the at the fiftieth. That's where we starting them at right there, and I think that's a, a what better place to start them at than not scary farm. Yeah, seriously. Uh, we went when we were planning our whole our whole like con trip is what we call it. Um, um, since I've moved out here, but we were like, at first we we're like, bro, like we can't take the baby. Like I think he was only like a month and a half old. And we're like, bro, we can't take the baby. And then, like, at the same time, we're like, but, like, he's so young, so, like, we still want to, like, we're very protective. So, we're like, we still want to, like, make sure he's okay and everything. Right. It's not like I didn't trust my mom or anything, but, like, uh, still, I just, I wanted to, like, be there with him. Yeah. And then, like, last minute, we're like, fuck it, let's just take him. And then we're like, to HHN and to, to Scary Farm. And I was like, we thought about it, and then we're like, okay, we'll take him to Scary Farm. But we won't do HHN because of HHN. Their music is like 10 times louder. And also the chainsaws and um, the fumes from the chainsaws and stuff like that. We don't want to risk anything with the baby. And all like, the only thing we'd have to worry about at nuts is uh, the fog. Mm -hmm. And even then, we're like, it's not that bad. We'll just avoid Foggy Alley and then we'll be fine. And then so mm -hmm. we just said, fuck it. <laughs> the one downside in them. We're still low key, like upset about is it the fact that for a one month old baby, I understand some part of it, 
but for a one month old baby, we had to pay for his general admission ticket and for buffet. This homie doesn't even like eat people this, food yet. <laughs> yeah, like he just drinks milk and they made it. Like I had called knots and then they were like, oh yeah, like it's it, like he take it takes up space and so we count him as a body. And I was like, bro, so I, I pulled the gun. I was like, I want him there. You know, I'm just going to do it. So we bought him a ticket. And I remember when we first like went to check into our buffet, they didn't want to give us the cup for him. And we were like, and it was like, no, 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 no. Like, we paid for a ticket. We get the cup. Yeah. The lady was like, oh, okay, then here. And so we were like, bro, like, and so we took freaking advantage of that, dude. At the end, when we were, like, getting kicked out, we were like, hey, we paid for a body, so that's extra food, right? Yeah. So, dude, before we left, we stacked up on, like, a fuck ton of cookies, a fuck ton of dessert, pie, everything. And we just kept it all in the stroller. And so we literally, we didn't have to buy like any snacks the whole night because we were like, "Hey, we fucking paid for a fucking ticket, so yeah, you know, just take all the what you would have had someone else eat and just take it for you on the way to go." Yeah, and then yeah, no, he he was pretty cool with it. Like we we of course we had to buy him the little the baby headphones because of everything being loud. Um, but literally, I think he was asleep the entire event. I don't think with any loud like I remember one. We were in Ghost Town. We were sitting there watching Matt slide, and Merrick was like behind us, and he scared somebody, and he shook his jug. And it was like super loud for us. Baby didn't even flinch or nothing. <laughs> and so we're like, okay, cool. And then um, we obviously got a photo with him with Matt and everything. And then Matt uh, gave him his actual like he's called headband that he was wearing that night. Yeah. He like unraveled it and like tied it to the baby's stroller. And so we literally still carry it with us every every day. It's still attached to his his, uh, his baby stroller. And we're nice. like, so when he gets older, we're like, you see, that's your that's your the old Matt's freaking headband right there. Be like he sweated in that, yeah. But yeah, no, I I, uh, I thought that was fun because I remember we we ran into you guys that weekend, and you guys were in Carnival chilling. And you guys had the baby set up and everything. You guys are just still chilling and stuff, taking a little break. Um, and you pointed out the baby, and I came over and I said hi, and I saw the baby for the first time in person, and it was awesome, dude. It was it was cool to see that you still see families out there that do that, and it's like it's not an issue because it's like you're not forcing the kid to go through a maze. You know, you're just kind of you're just showing them the atmosphere. Yeah. And we we technically like even one of the people. I think it was for um, Bloodline. Uh, they the the, what, the person in the, in the front of the queue, they're like, oh, are you going to take the baby too? And we're like, what? They're like, yeah, it's handicap accessible, so you could take the baby. And we're like, uh, we're, we're just going to wait off on the mazes this year. <laughs> yeah. But um, no, next year, uh, I think we're going to take them to HHN also. Nice. Because by then, it'll be a year. And he'll he'll be a little bit more like aware. Yeah, but we're probably gonna take him to both again. Should be fun. You gotta plan. Yeah. H- you just gotta plan HHN carefully because you know uh, how expensive those tickets are and how cr- big those crowds are. Yeah, well, well, we went. We did pretty good. Um, we did get kind of screwed over because remember the whole early entry. If you're an annual pass member. Yeah. Yeah, so we did that. And so we got in and we went to the lower lot and everybody else was like getting in the lines for the mazes. And so we're like, okay, let's go get in the line. And we tried going over and then they were like, Oh no, like your your wristband's a different color. Um, like so you have to wait until six. Your wristband is just so you don't have to deal with the opening crowd, um, the opening ceremony crowd. They're like, But you guys can hang out down here. You guys just can't get into a line until like seven o'clock. And we're like, bruh. <laughs> Dude, that was BS this year. The whole pain for early entry. I hated that so much. But no, the first day we, well, because I, I went twice, but the first time we went, we, we did Holidays in Hell. We did the tram. We did Monsturos. And. What did we do? 
Oh crap, I think they might have been the only ones we did. Uh, oh, and Stranger Things. Yeah. And then um, I had promised Alyssa, I was like, okay, when, when you guys cook, because they came up uh, like midway point of the season to come visit me at Shack, and then I, I told Alyssa, I was like, since you didn't get to finish all the mazes, I'm like, I'll take you to, I'll take you to HHN again, and we'll just do the mazes that we didn't do. And so that's what we did. It was just me, Justin, and her. And we um, we did all the other ones. We did like Last of Us and Exorcist and the the monsters. The only one we didn't do because we were like we were going to wait like two hours for was Chucky. Yeah. So and yeah. I was like, oh, I looked at I looked at her and I looked at Justin. I was like, yeah, dog. I don't think we're missing out on much. It, you know, like it, it's freaking Chucky. So. I thought the Chucky maze this year was actually like it blew me away. It was it was better than I was anticipating it was going to be. Yeah, you but, see, a whole bunch of people were talking bad on the the monsters one, the uh, the uh, Invisible Man and Hunchback and like all that. Oh yeah. And when we went in it, bro, that was the one that like dropped me. I I was not a fan of how much black walls were put into that one compared to every other maze. Like that's to to me with with the name like Universal Monsters like it felt like that was just kind of like okay, we're kind of done with everything scenic wise with everything else. Let's, let's let's throw this one together real quick. Yeah. The one I was like in love with and I like loved it. Uh Monsteros. Yeah, that Monsteros was, was good. Perfect. That that ending like scene, like oh, there I, is always. I really think that's a great like, especially like transition and segue into from like Universal Monsters to like now going to the Latin American version of the monsters, and it's like to see because like you could do anything with that, especially because that's all original. So like you could just you could go ape shit with that, make it your own. Yeah. But yeah, that that maze was just beautiful. I, I'm always so impressed when they can fit such a well detailed maze in that little area. Here's the thing. Every maze that's been in that spot in that French quarter is in my opinion has always been fucking amazing. Yeah, just about pretty much. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen one bad maze there to be honest with you. Yeah. Well for me I think it would have been El Cucuy because I didn't really care for that one that much. You didn't like El Cucuy? I liked El Cucuy. I guess it was cool, but it didn't scare me so I was like, you know, it wasn't that like bad. That was Dracula Untold was all right. Oh yeah, I remember when that was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, nah, bro, that's not nah, Alien versus Predator. That was bad. But that wasn't right there. No, I know, but I'm saying that one in general. That one was bad. the The first time they did it, the second time they did it. The uh, first time they did it, it was it was awesome, and then the second time we went through it again, it was just like this is the same exact thing. It might have been the second time because this this was back when they were still doing like the lower lot in the yeah. backstage. Um, yeah. But no, yeah, it was a good season and for HHN, pretty cool shit to see too. What was your favorite maze this year at HHN? Oh, you said Monsteros. That one's up there, but I think the the other one that I, I really like liked liked. Which is crazy. It's crazy because I didn't play the game or watch the show. Last of Us. It's so fucking gorgeous. Dude, I talk so much shit on it to Alyssa because she's like a big fan of it. I and love then The Last of Us. Like, oh, I was like, bro, it's going to suck. Watch. It's going to suck. Like, it's like, and when we went in there, me and Justin like, were the ones that got scared the most and more than Alyssa. We were like, bro, what the fuck? Dude, but Last of Us was so good. Everything and like, the effects that they did, like, yeah. fucking great. Like that insane. scene with the, uh, the, uh, the machine gun truck. Yeah. Moved. Like, we didn't know it moved, and we went in there, and it started moving. I was like, for a second, I was like, are we moving, or, like, are the walls moving? And we heard the gunshots, and then that shit was loud as hell. Dude, and The Last of Us, that. we walked in that maze the first time. And the very first time we walked in through it, I, I didn't really get to experience it because I was filming uh, Sammy's POV of it. And so I, I'm hearing a lot of things and I'm kind of like, while I'm filming, looking a little bit like, oh, shit, that's cool. But like then it then like later on that that night, um, 
we we ended up going back through it because they never scanned our ticket for The Last of Us. So we ended up going back through it again so I could film a POV of it because I was like, I, I kind of want to I want to see that again. Like, I, I got to see that with my own eyes. And, dude, I was I was in love with all the references to the game. And for Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson, who played Joel and Allie in the game, uh, to come back and actually re-record or record some new voice lines for the for the maze was was awesome. That 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 night was for me was fucking the opening night was just fucking amazing because I got to actually meet Troy Baker and and Neil Druckmann who created the game and the show and so I was like holy fuck as a fanboy this is just all you ever wanted right here yeah dude no I had I had a good uh, yeah I, I think HHN overall though for some reason was just a solid year oh yeah for for me way better than last year's oh hundred percent. Too, that that whole uh like the the toys yeah thing like it worked for me i was like bro this is sick like this is creepy because all the toys it's not all like super like cartoony toys like i know there was some like the bear and, like the monkey and stuff i was like okay that like you know looks like whatever but like for me like one of the characters there that got me was the nutcracker still walker and then the uh the ballerina doll. That face was creepy as shit. Is that the one where that would go around poking people with a knife? No, no, no. That's that's the uh, the big crack like rag doll. So a shout out to whoever played that character. Uh, if you are out there, contact me. We need to have a conversation. Hey, I can hook you up. Cause you know who played that character some nights? Who? Did you ever see our fire performer at Shack? Well, there's a few, so. Girl, Paris. Oh, that's yeah. I follow her on Instagram. That was her. Yeah, she did. She uh, did the. I, oh no, she didn't do this. She didn't do the stabby stabby video that went like viral. But she played that character, and she also played some of the street characters in the when you when you exit Mos Fudos, mm -hmm. and it's like the Latin America like scare zone. Yeah, she worked that area too. I got some good footage there uh, the night because we did we went two nights too. We did for opening night and then we uh, we forked out the money and I wanted to try it out. We did R I P and on the R I P night, dude, I was just like we were getting good footage right there, just standing there for a cool minute and they were just like that that cast. I don't know who it was if it was both cast that I got because I was there for a minute and uh, it was just they were their energy was on on another level, man. They had the stilt walkers going hard and they had the freaking. The, the 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 performers freaking running up and down that zone, man. They, you know, for that being a zone, that's a small zone too, and they and they work it really well. I mean, they they utilize all areas of that zone, and and they really make the most of it. I know, yeah, dude, hit her up. She's she's done HHN, I think, like six years. I gotta get Star on the on the on the on the, sh on the show before I get her, because you know, I you know, the, as I talk to Star more. And and, dis, and and as she tells me more stories about the past years of HHN she's worked, I do not re I did not realize how much of a fan of hers I actually was until she started telling me of all the characters she played and all the years I've gone even before I started doing Nights of Horror. It was like, no way you were that character. I was like, my little freaking high school nerd ass was like, whoa, this character's fucking spot on. Like, what the hell? And like, just kind of seeing her do all these characters, and I'm just like, no shit. Like, I don't know how many times I probably saw you, but damn. Yeah, uh, it's a, it's a, it was a good season, man. I think 2023 overall was just a, an interesting year. We didn't get to do as much as we wanted to, but uh, we did hit some of the major ones. Uh, Scary Farm 50th, dude. Um, I think probably by far one of the best years of the event I've ever been to. Yeah. Um, what would do? I mean, I I, I have to give. I have to give the the winning maze to one of two, either Cinema Slasher or Chilling Chambers. I would give it to Chilling Chambers, the because I went multiple times to Nas. I think I ended up going like three times. Um, what's it called? Uh, every time I went into into cinema, it just it wasn't hitting for me. That opening night cinema, dude. That opening weekend. That shit hit different. Like that was, I think, some of the best walkthroughs of that maze I had ever gotten. But yeah, you're right. I think towards the season, as the season went on, I don't know if they were moving people around or if people like kind of dropped out. But like, yeah, the cast looked like it was getting less and less. But visually, 
I mean, as a movie fan, just looking at that maze, it was just like, dude, you're getting teleported into these movies and the theater itself is like alive. Like, this is fucking cool. Yeah, the way it worked with like, oh, this is like slasher, like one or whatever. Then you would work until like the second movie and stuff like that. Like that I thought was like hella cool. Like those like those little those like little breaks to like show you're going into the next movie and like those little theater rooms. I thought that was like hella sick. Yeah, dude. But Chilling Chambers, man, I think that's the one that's going to take it for me. I think that's the most walkthroughs we did in a maze this season at Not Scary Farm. Um, I, I, I think I just loved the references to old school Not Scary Farm, uh, the mazes of the past, you know, to kind of revisit that. It was kind of like walking through a time machine. Uh, and it kind of wanted you to want more because it was like as you were coming out of the end of one kind of like section of the maze like then you go into another section of another maze and it's just like oh dude but i was just getting into asylum oh dude i was just getting into dollhouse man like come on keep it going yeah or doll factory yeah, dude it, it, it was such it was i mean there's so many easter eggs in that maze too and I, and that made me so mad that this was the year they took away the the behind the fog tour because like that would have been a maze to be fucking go through yeah, yeah this year like it would have worked like amazing to like see all that like chilling chamber stuff like yeah. in detail and stuff like that yeah, with lights on daytime like i would literally just be like let's take the longest in this maze because there's a lot that i need to break down here <laughs> dude it was it was it was a good year i mean did you i mean i, I i'll tell you this i spent a fuck ton of money on merch this year for not scary form i'm like i'm not here's the thing like I used to buy merch, like, everywhere, like, HHN and Scary Farm all the time. Yeah. But, like, I kind of, like, stopped buying merch and stuff like that. But I know a lot of the stuff that they did have was, like, sick as hell. Like, Danielle got, like, the uh, the pumpkin uh, jersey. That. Oh, and then you got that guy. He's in the corner, chilling. But, um, but yeah, their merch was pretty sick this year with, like, the, the spare jerseys and stuff like that. Yeah, no, they they really went all out on merch. I remember when they announced all that merch at uh, Midsummer Scream this past year. Um, and dude, I I even went as far to buy the I bought the Monopoly too, dude. Um, would love to sure. play. I would love to play a game of Monopoly live stream with some some scare actors if they have the time for like a day to fucking just come over and play it. Let's see how long it can go for, and let's see how mad everybody can get at each other by the end of the day would be sick honestly if you did a live stream like that <laughs> that's the plan uh it's just a matter of putting it together uh maybe yeah. do maybe we'll do another 24 hour live stream and within every couple hours we'll go back to the game and play it for like an hour <laughs> <laughs> that'd be hilarious but yeah dude no I, I i really enjoyed this season man i had I have so many memories made this season we love not scary farm so much um but yeah, and then of course, obviously, going to Shacktober was a great one to come see you guys. Uh, I had personally never seen you actually scare in person, like at a, an event like this. I mean, I've seen you at like Street Food Tuesday. I've seen you at like Creeper Real, and you know, you guys are kind of just uh, in a way you're there, and you guys are providing kind of like atmosphere for the event and kind of interacting more more interaction than you would do at a haunt, you know. So to kind of see you in the zone of kind of actually scaring this time and everything. I mean, I just told you the other day, I think we were in a in Discord, and I was like, y'all don't even know, but y'all are part of the intro. And and then you're like, wait, what? And then you pulled up the video, you're like, oh, bro. And then, uh, yeah, so I mean, just kind of going back and, and just going to see, uh, like, Shacktober again and just kind of see all those improvements made, man. I, I was really satisfied when I left. I was like, actually, this was this year it was actually really fun. It was really good. Um, glad we got to go on, on the, the, the maze on the boat before that shit flooded that night. I mean, I don't know what the hell happened that night. Dude, yeah, I would have They said it had nothing to do with the maze. It was something with um, the uh, hotel plumbing. Yeah. And that was what was funny to me because I was like, I, I, I was like, what are the odds that we got, you know, you guys kept pushing us like you guys are going to want to go through that one right now because it's going to get packed. It was a yeah. sat, it was a fucking Saturday. So we were like, all right, we're going to get that out of the way real quick. And then like not even like an hour later, we get told, yeah, the whole maze is flooded right now. I'm like, what? <laughs> Dude, yeah. that that that, that maze. Was, that was pretty funny. I, I don't know how you guys can can work. I mean, and and that's going to be something that 
yeah, I, I mean, I don't know how you guys can do it because, like, I, I was walking on the maze in the boat, and the first half is actually, like, on an eerie part of the boat. I don't know how people can scare in that thing, dude. Just walking through it was fucking eerie as fuck. I don't know how people can stay there and scare all night. I had noticed that everyone is in pairs, it seems like. So, like, if there's someone, like, on this corner, then there's going to be someone, like, not too far away from them. So, I think that's a good, like, little buddy system thing that they do for... I don't know if that's why they do it or that's just always how they've done things. Yeah, no, it was, it was funny, too, because, like... I would hate to like work on the shit. Yeah. Cause like I've experienced some paranormal shit there. Uh, but no, I remember it was, I think it was like our dress rehearsal night or something. And they were doing the build still for that maze. And I think all the, the, uh, the build workers, they were all on lunch. So like they were all in the back, Yeah, but there was like one guy who was still like knocking shit out. He was like the head, like construction guy. And this dude's like a super like tough like old school like almost like redneck type of guy right and he was in there by himself and he was like working around some shit and then all of a sudden he got a he, he said he he got a ball thrown at him it was like a little ball that was left over from dark harbor right yeah. or something like that and he was in a part of a maze where or his back was facing literally like in that first like eerie part of that maze mm -hmm. and his back was facing literally just a wall like a corner so there was nothing could have obviously thrown it and he said he was like on his knees like i think he said he was like packing up his like his toolbox and the ball like flew and like hit him in the back and he like stood up and like looked and he like radioed and because you know how like with the radio you can like click the button and so you'll hear the other radio go off if it, if you know whatever yeah. Because he thought it was one of the other guys. Nothing. He, like, searched the maze. And then after he said, fuck this. And then he walked out. And I remember he went to the back and he was explaining it to all of us. He's like, I don't know what just happened, but something happened. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, what? And then he told us and we're like, oh, dude, some shit happened. And then he told one of the other construction guys. And he's like, yep, the queen will do that to you. Like, and I was like. Yep, I'm like I, I was like I remember all the shit that that like I witnessed and felt. So I was like, yeah. So were you at all this year for season? Did you at all have to go on the boat for anything? Um, no. I think the only time we went on the boat was for um, our dress rehearsal day. Like they had to show everybody like the tour of everything, right? Of the whole so, layout and everything. Yeah. Yeah, so we walked through it, but it was, like, still being built. Right. Because they had to, like, rush build it because, like, their their lumber order or something was, like, late. So they had they were, like, rush building it. So when I walked through it, great go that whole military section right. wasn't even, like, half up, like, built yet. Was that the section that got flooded, too? I think they still, like, right in the, in like, the middle where it splits from the hotel side to the the military side. Oh, okay, yeah, that kind of like, yeah, that kind of, yeah, I, I remember then. Yeah, that's, uh, dude, that ship, it's got such a history, man. Um, I, I need to, I need to do a ghost hunting video there one time. We'll see what happens. Dude. Yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll get you, some shit. You know for a fact if I do a ghost hunting video there, I have to do a parody recreation of Zach Bagans' intro for Ghost Adventures. Oh, dude, you would kill it. Glasses, hat, and everything. Like, flannel, all that shit. <laughs> like that guy on TikTok. Dude, right now, did, did you see him? He went to the freaking haunted museum. He's like, I'm your savior. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I'd like, if I ran into that guy, dude, I'd be like, can I get a photo? Dude, you're great. <laughs> Man, uh, it, it, I mean, it, it's been, I guess it's been a mix, mix of emotions for this season across the board for everyone. Uh, now, yeah. You say uh, minimum five years, uh, obviously. In the meantime, you're gonna be watching and watching your boy grow up, be a father for him, be there for him, all that stuff. Are are you kind of are you kind of putting it at that five year mark so it could be at the time where he's kind of old enough to kind of grasp as to what's going on? He can kind of see you and kind of visit you. Is, is or are you kind of what, what's the what's the thought process behind five? So. I thought five just like it was weird because I because I came back for literally one day 
um, dur- like midway during like the run before we started working Wednesdays. Right. Oh no, it was the the, the same week that we started Wednesdays. Um, I I drove back up here because it was his his like second doctor's appointment, so I had to be there. Mm-hmm. And then also me and Danielle had to get like updated like a shot or mm-hmm. something. And then so I came down here, and then like I had already said I was gonna like retire and stuff, and so. Like, I don't know, it just randomly popped in my head, and then I remember someone telling me that, they're like, the first five years of your child's, like, life are the most important. And so, like, it was weird, because I thought about, like, the number five. I'm like, oh, five years, you know, whatever. And then literally, like, later that night, I was scrolling on TikTok, and, like, somebody, like, it was, like, a dad talking, saying that, like, like yeah, your, your kid's, like, first five years are the most important, like, make the most out of it. And then also too, like you brought you brought up a, another point too. It's like yeah, once he's that age, he's able to grasp like the fact of what it is, and to be able to go see me and stuff like that. That's also too why I want to take him every year. So he he's already built that like like love and like you know everything for it and for the community and stuff like that. So that that's why I said the five year minimum. Like it's just that's just the way I'm gonna do it. And like I said, I hope to come back. Who knows? Maybe by then, like, you know, other health issues like um, and stuff like that. And I might not be able to do it, you know, so it's just it is what it is. But um, I have said that, like, depending on, like, the haunt or stuff like that, um, I'd come back maybe to do, like, one guest scare night or something like that um, within these next five years. Um but the one thing that I'm not opposed to is working as uh, management. So, like, I'll still be in the community, and I'll still be a, a part of Haunt, but I'm, I won't be actually scary. You'll be on the behind-the-scenes aspect of things, though. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I'd still want to be in the industry. I don't want to just, like, throw away the industry for, like, the next five years and just go as, a, like, a guest. stuff and get a few friends and all that stuff but uh but yeah i i definitely would love to do like uh management for heart uh depending on what heart you know we'll just see how it plays out and stuff like that and I, I I think that uh, it's a, it's a solid plan, man. I think you're right. The first five years for a child's life is is the most important because that's where they start their their growth and developmental into speaking and you know learning more and their brains are starting to develop and they're starting to get a concept of of what kind of how life works in a way like an early concept of like oh yeah this is what you're supposed to the do's and don'ts of life and whatnot. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think that's that's awesome to hear that, man, and, and to, to see you doing what you're doing and, and you and I are the same exact age, you know. So to see what you're you and I, you know, to see what you're doing at this age, man, is is insane. And we, we talk about it all the time as is how to uh good for you to to that you found someone, a partner that you love and now you guys are starting a family. Um uh, yeah. And I think that's awesome. because uh, you guys both came from the same kind of background of, of kind of love in this industry. And, you know, and you're still, now you're taking a new step, a new chapter of your life of, of starting that family and now eventually growing the future of this industry at this point. No, yeah. And, um, you know, big shout out to, you know, Danielle herself, you know, uh, like people who know me in my personal life and stuff like that know that when I was in L.A., I was heading down like the completely like wrong path of like life. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when I found her and stuff like that and. You know, I was going through, like, when I was in the hospital and stuff like that and everything like that. She was there for me, like, 24-7. Like, on a, either on a video call or, like, a regular phone call, 24-7. Yeah. Every day for, like, a solid, like, week while I was in, in the hospital and stuff like that. And that's when I realized, I'm like, you know, this is someone who, you know, cares about me and stuff like that. And, you know, that's when I decided to come out here and, you know, start, you know, I when I moved out here, I was like, this is my redemption in life and I got to make the best of it. And so, you know, freaking at my age at the time, I think I was only, uh, I was only 21 and, you know, 21 year old coming into, you know, being with like completely dropping everything 
and moving out and then getting the life on track and then, you know, being a stepdad, which was like a whole new thing. And then, you know, it made me realize a lot of things. And then, you know, like, I, I don't want to, I didn't want to burn bridges like back in LA and stuff like that. Cause I did do that, you know, with some of the haunt people. Um, but it's just kind of like that second chance in life. And as far as haunt wise, after that, all that happened, I think I had like a pretty good, like last couple years. Cause this was like prime COVID. So like no haunts were like happening, but, um, when they came back, I worked to hunt out here and stuff like that. And so that was cool. And she's also a slider and a haunt actor. So, you know, it worked, got to scare with her, um, and stuff like that. And, you know, I've told she, she asked me when I was like, literally on my drive back from Shacktoberfest, she was like, you know, would you like, you know, like, are you going to come visit me if I do hunt this year? And I was like, of course, what the fuck? Like, you know, you saw me in action. I just get to be the guest for you because she's known me. Like at first I didn't know her, but she, she saw me 2018, 2019 at, at, uh, at dark Harbor and stuff like that. So, you know, to pay it back to her and be like her guest and like see her in action and, you know, enjoying hunt as much as I do, you know, it's, it's very cool to see. And then that way too, the baby is like, you know, like, Oh, you know, both my parents do this stuff and they have like a great time together and stuff. So. Right. A hundred percent agree. I mean, I think that's a really well supported uh, system that you guys um, have together, that, that chemistry that you guys have together of supporting one another uh, in this, in your guys' decisions and also taking the responsibility of, of being parents as well. Um, and, you know, it's awesome to see you guys every time, uh, I, I see you guys, it's always smiles and, and just happiness, man. I can see that you're generally happy. Um, and I could see that the family is ha is happy, you know, and everyone's just kind of, um, in great moods all the time. You know, there's never any negativity when I come around, um, or visit or anything. It's always fun. It's always just BS with all of us and, and just, uh, yeah. great time, you know? And, and that's, that's what, that's, what's all that's important right there. Those are the memories that you're going to remember the most. Um, exactly. you know, and, and, you know, I, I was happy to see you on, on the, on the final leg of this, of this kind of chapter of your life right now, as far as scare acting goes. And we hope to see you back in five years, but we can't wait to see what comes next within those next five years. Like you said, it could be management. It could be a guest spot here or there. It could just be even visiting at that point. But, um, Wherever it takes you, man, you know it's going to take you probably right back to where you all began as far as getting back on those pads again one last time and, and giving it your all or training the next generation to give it their all. So either way, your, 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 your story ends with you back on pads. And, like, I had a couple of people ask me, like, oh, what about the QM sliders? What about the QM sliders? Like, you're still part of them. And it's like, yeah, I'm still part of them. And, you know, I'll still work some of the events and stuff like that. Obviously, it's hard because I live all the way the fuck out here. But, right. Um, but, no, yeah, I'll, I'm still part of the team. I'm still going to do these events when I can. Um, I don't count it as, like, still doing hot because they're, they're really not hot. We're just there, like you said earlier, for, like, atmosphere and to, like, bring some, like, lively to, like, the, uh, the events and stuff like that. So, right. But, yeah, you could still catch me in my other character at some of these events when, when I can't make it. So, man, we got Lone Star here, Omar, the family man, the haunt man, the supernatural man. He's all those, he's all those men. Um, and the dad who's still filming a podcast. Uh, look at that. Watching. That is awesome. That's awesome. The dad duties. You're, you're on, you're on the night shift tonight or what? Uh, yeah, most of the time on like, uh, my, uh, my Fridays, um, <laughs> I'll, I, since I stay up to play or whatever, I let Danielle catch up on some sleep and stuff like that. And I'll stay up since obviously, you know how we are. We'll sometimes be playing to like, you know, the butt crack of dawn and stuff like that. So yeah, hundred percent. Got to give the mama some rest too, you know? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. That, that, that's, that's a, that's like I said, the chemistry between you two. It's great. Love it. Um, my friend, for them, for all those who want to keep up with you, all that stuff, 
Where can they find you? Social media. Uh, I think it's because we I changed it like twice. Uh, I think I'm still at QM like under here. Let me check real quick because I'm a low key guy. QMS QMS underscore Lone Star six six six. QM underscore Lone Star 66. Yeah, that sounds about right. I see that name on a basis every day, on a daily basis. So, yeah, that sounds that's a, that sounds about right. I think that's good. Yeah. Man, it has been an absolute pleasure uh, kicking off uh, another season of the Miles 4 podcast uh, on the road to 200 episodes, episode 190. I think this is 191 or 192. Uh, it's one of the two, but we're on the road to 200 episodes. Um, so yeah, thank you for kicking it off, man. I, I know I've, uh, I've owed you another podcast for some time now. And, uh, the, uh, you gotta, you gotta do a shoot the shit of just talking about supernatural, dude. bro. I mean, I'd say let's do hey, a podcast about that, but there's probably already one out there. Someone breaking down every single episode, dude, we'll do supernatural and the boys, bro. Same show creators too. Yeah. That's why. Dude, Jeffrey Dean Morgan season four. Can't wait for that. Dude, I know. I saw that and I was like, no way. That's going to be dope. You know, he's going to be that same smart ass character that we all know and love. Yep. Love it, man. <laughs> hey, man, I appreciate you coming on the show tonight, man. For all those who are new out to the channel, uh, please hit that like button. Leave some comments down for Omar. Uh, wishing him a fairly, hopefully, um, temporary retirement but you know he's gonna go enjoy doing dad things and and just being a dad in general uh and that's the best thing anything can offer in life right there uh so yeah yep. leave some some nice Thank comments you for having me of course man anytime anytime uh like i said subscribe follow us on all our socials and uh tune in every week we're going live on on youtube now nights of horror uh, and we're playing with the boys or we're playing game other games whatever it may be we're doing it so uh until then See you guys uh, next week for another episode.